Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I would like to address uh, partial differential equations in this lecture. Um, we have already spoken about ordinary differential equations. That's the uh, differential equations where function of one argument with its derivatives participates. Now, uh, obviously, the natural extension is to allow functions of more than one attribute argument uh, with partial derivatives um, participate in this equation. So that's basically what it is all about. Now, uh, this lecture is part of the course of advanced mathematics for teenagers and high school students presented at unisor.com. Um, it's better to view this lecture from this website because every lecture has detailed notes and in some cases exams which you can just you know use to to check yourself um, and the site is completely free there are no advertisement it's just pure knowledge so uh, partial differential equations now what's interesting is um, and it's basically uh, about both ordinary differential equations and partial differential equations but probably it's even more about partial um, the whole physics is actually filled with different laws which are expressed in terms of uh, differential equations um, one of the examples we were talking about um, acceleration for ordinary uh, differential equations that's basically the second Newton's law and uh, also we were talking about the uh, spring uh, how it behaves and that's also differential equation of the second order now um, as far as partial differential equations again as I was saying physics is just filled with all these um, examples um, so today instead of talking about like purely mathematical uh, approach to uh, partial differential equations I will exemplify it with one particular problem um, very physical in nature very um, kind, of, kind of a commonplace you will definitely recognize the process because you were dealing with this many times and it leads to a differential partial differential equation so in every aspect of physics, in uh, uh, thermodynamics, in electricity, magnetism, gravitation, wherever you go, you will find differential equations. And um, I would like actually to spend some time to explain it to you, although regular high school curriculum very rarely um, includes this topic. Anyway, it's not much more difficult than let's say ordinary differential equations and I think it's very useful to know that this is basically the foundation of the whole physics okay so um, what I'm going to talk about is dissipation of the heat in one particular case so let's consider you have a very thin rod which at some point has some temperature um, and then we started uh, heating it at this particular end. Now, as soon as we applied the heat to this particular end, the heat will dissipate towards the other end. My purpose is to find temperature as a function of two arguments. One is time and another is the distance from the beginning this is zero so at the end of this lecture I will basically come up with a differential equation partial differential equation because this is a function of two arguments now time and x coordinate and this partial differential equation basically defines how the heat dissipates and it's called heat equation <laughs> heat equation so that's my goal for this particular lecture all right okay so how can I approach this I will try to um, to use uh, only logic I, I, I will not present you with any fact 
without the proof, except there are certain experimental facts, which I will explain right now. So, we are dealing with certain physical entities, and I would like to make sure that everybody understands what, what we are dealing with. So, the first um, entity is the heat. Now, what is heat? Well, heat is a form of energy. It's inner energy within a particular object. It basically reflects how the molecules inside this rod, let's say it's a metal rod, how the molecule insti molecules inside, inside of this metal rod are vibrating. The more intensely they vibrate, the, the more uh, heat actually was infused into this object and its temperature is higher. So heat is a form of energy and again in a simple uh, kind of view you can always consider it as a vibration of the molecules inside of this of this body. So that's what heat, heat is uh, all about. Now what is the temperature? Well temperature is a measure of how intensely these molecules are vibrating. So if you touch this with a thermometer for instance then the vibration will actually be transform, tra transferred into the thermometer itself and thermometer will show the temperature, show the intensity of this vibration. So the heat is energy, temperature is a measure of the intensity of the vibration of molecules inside of this. All right, now, what's interesting is that obviously the more energy you pour into an object, well, the more intensely molecules will start vibrating, right? and therefore the temperature will rise. So the amount of heat which you infuse into the object and its temperature are related somehow. So experimentally, experimentally was established that if you take one particular uh, material, uh, let's say iron or, or anything else, and you will take a unit of this material in mass, so one kilogram, let's say, and um, you apply certain amount of heat, certain amount of energy to this particular object to raise its temperature, then the amount of heat which you pour into this object and the temperature are proportional to each other. Basically, the formula, and again, this is experimental formula. So if you have some kind of an increment of the heat which you supply into this object, and uh, you have certain temperature by which, uh, the, well, you have certain increase in temperature, then what's important is that it's proportional to the mass of this object, where C is certain uh, coefficient, it's, it's called a specific heat capacity for this particular m material, whether it's I don't know, iron or, or plastic or, or anything like this. So every uh, material has its own specific heat capacity. How much energy is necessary basically to supply to increase its temperature by let's say one degree. So uh, if you have Obviously, if you have twice as much of this material to raise by the same temperature, you need twice as much uh, energy to supply. So that's why it's proportional to the mass. And again, the coefficient, this coefficient, which is called specific heat, specific heat capacity, is specific for each particular material. So let's say if you want to uh, raise the temperature of the water by one degree you need certain amount of heat to supply but if you want to increase um, the same uh, mass one gram let's say of uh, iron to increase the temperature by one degree you need a different amount of heat and this is what specific heat capacity actually means it's amount of heat you need to supply to a unit of mass to raise the temperature by unit of temperature right so this is again experimental fact 
I mean, maybe there is certain theory which is based on some molecular structure, etc., and it, it can explain this formula. But first, it was derived basically experimentally. People, pe people realize that if you supply twice as much heat to the same body, it will be uh, the rays of the temperature would be twice as much. So that's what it is. And different objects uh, have this different number. But anyway, it's specific for each one of them. So that's very important experimental thing. Now, another, so this is specific heat. Another, again, experimental fact is conductivity, the thermal conductivity. Now, you obviously had this experience. If you have a teaspoon made of steel and you put it in a hot tea, uh, it will start uh, uh, heating up. At certain, you know, you need certain time to, to, to feel that this is really very, very hot. Very hot. But if you have a, a silver spoon, you will feel it much sooner. So the silver um, conduct, conducts the, the, the heat much faster than the steel, let's say. All right? So different materials, not only they have different specific heat capacity, but they also have specific specificity of uh, conductivity. So how fast they transmit the the heat from from one point to another. Now, this is a much more, I would say, delicate uh, issue. This uh, 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 thermal uh, thermal conductivity. Now, obviously, if you have certain amount of heat apply applied to one particular place um, of this of this object made of certain material, then um, you obviously um, understand that if the difference between the temperature uh, of this source of the heat is significantly higher than the temperature of the body which you are attaching to, the heat will be um, uh, transferred faster. So the bigger difference in temperature, the faster heat would be transferred. And again, there is a proportionality. So what's very important is the following. Uh, if your temperature between this point and the next point is um, is, is, is very different, is the difference is very big. So if uh, uh, it's very much, it's very much analogous to you have the high water and the lower water. Whenever you are um, having this water coming down, the ending speed would be faster, right? So the water will be faster um, uh, going from, from this reservoir to this reservoir. Then, if they are like much closer to each other. Same thing with the heat. So, what's very important, it depends on how temperature is changing. So, if the temperature is changing with certain rate, then the amount of heat which is actually con uh, uh, con uh, condu conduced, transferred, transferred uh, from one point to another would be greater. So the greater the difference, the greater the speed of uh, transfer. So this particular um, thermal conductivity is very much dependent on the rate of change of the temperature from point to point. Now, I if we are talking about the thin rod, we have only basically one dimension. So our movement from point to point has only one um, coordinate, which is x coordinate. Temperature is changing somehow. This is the higher temperature, this is lower temperature. But if you take two different points, this one and this one, let's say this is x and this is x plus delta x, then the transfer of energy from here to here uh, would be actually more uh, would be faster if the temperature has a dif uh, if the difference in temperature is greater, right? So, 
on any particular slice of this. This um, uh, conductivity depends on, um, on the rate of change of the temperature. Now, what is the rate of change of temperature? Well, temperature is a function of two arguments. So, right now we are talking about argument x. So, if I will take a partial derivative of this uh, function by x coordinate, I will have the rate of change, right? I don't know this function, obviously, yet. But I do know that this is a very important factor in, uh, in the speed of transfer um, of the uh, heat from, from left to right. Now, how can I, exp how can I uh, represent it in, in the formula? Here is how. Amount of heat which goes through um, this particular um, point from left to right, from, uh, from, the le from slice uh, at, at, at point X, is proportional to this, obviously. Then it also depends on um, the time we are applying this heat. I mean, obviously, the greater the time, the greater the heat is needed or will be transferred. And another thing is, obviously, we need the area of the crosscut. So, obviously, again, the wider connection between two slices, um, the faster um, the heat transfer will occur, right? Because it, it, it's actually transferred from one um, slice where molecules are vibrating with one speed to another slice so the more points of um, of touching these two slices um, the faster the heat will be transferred right so uh, obviously the amount of heat which will be transferred is proportional to as i was saying rate of change of the temperature uh, and uh, time this heat is applied and the uh, cross cut. And there is a coefficient of proportionality which is called transfer uh, ter thermal, co thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity. So, this is another formula which is purely experimental and this uh, thermal conductivity is obviously uh, dependent on the material. Uh, steel has one conductivity, silver has another conductivity. But if it's established, then we can always um, tell exactly that if my temperature rate is changing as this particular uh, derivative, partial derivative shows, then obviously the amount of heat will be proportional to the time. The longer we apply, the longer um, uh, the more energy will, will be transferred and the more uh, uh, touch, the more, more points of touching uh, when we are transferring the heat from, from one to another place, obviously the more heat will be transferred. So if you wish, this K is amount of heat which will be transferred per unit of time, per unit of area of touching, uh, per unit of rate of speed uh, changing of the temperature. Well, basically, um, I have set up completely whatever the problem we are talking about right now. So now, what we will do, we will just use these concepts which I was just explaining, the uh, thermal capacity, and conductivity, which are relating our uh, amount of heat and the temperature, and the amount of heat and uh, speed of the uh, transfer of the energy, I will use them to derive what exactly is the differential equation of this thing, using some simple logic. So here is the logic. Consider this particular piece from x to, m to x plus delta x, and we are assuming that this piece is small enough 
uh, well, actually, we will definitely um, have this delta x um, converging to zero, as well as delta t converging to zero. So we will uh, consider this to be small enough. And now let's here. Here is the logic. The amount of heat which this particular piece of rod consumes is equal to amount of heat which is going from left to right, which is incoming, and we have to subtract amount of heat which is outgoing. Right? Now, um, let me make a small adjustment to this formula. I mean, as it is written right now, consider it this way. Uh, if my temperature is decreasing, like in this particular case, this is the source of the heat, which means that this thing is negative. We would like it to be positive. So if we want this coefficient to be positive, I really have to put minus in front of it. So that's a small adjustment to make our um, constant k positive. So now I can say that k is positive as well as C is positive. That makes my life a little bit easier. All right, so let's talk about amount of heat which is consumed by this piece of rod and which contributed to the rise of the temperature. Well, this amount is equal to amount of heat which comes in minus amount of heat which comes out, right? Okay, so how much heat goes through this particular uh, border, left border of this interval. Well, let's assume that our uh, rod has an uh, area of uh, crosscut S. So we have an area of crosscut. We have coefficient which represents our um, thermal conductivity. So, we can basically say that it's equal to uh, delta Q in equals to. Basically, it's this. During the time delta T, that's what will be going through this point, through this border, I would say, inside. Now, what goes outside? Well, the outside would be minus, and this minus would be plus, also K, T of temperature of, it's a rate of temperature change in the next point, right? At this point. during the same amount of time and through the same uh, area of the, of the crosscut. So that difference is what remains within this particular piece and it contributes to rise of this of temperature of this thing. Now, if I have increased the amount of energy by this particular thing I don't really need this. In is this one and out is that one, right? So this is just delta Q. So if I have increased the amount of heat which this particular piece consumed, it's inside of this particular uh, piece of rod. Its temperature has risen by how much? Well, this is the law. So, what I have to do is, I have to equate this with C times mass. What's the mass of this? Well, again, I don't know the mass because I don't know what it's made of, but I know that there is a unit of uh, uh, material. This material has certain um, a certain number which basically represents its its mass per unit of volume, right? 
And the volume, I do know, the volume of this piece is, it's a cylinder, right? So it's uh, area times its length. times increase of the temperature. Well, what is increase of the temperature? Well, let me just leave this uh, as, as delta T. That's increase of the temperature during the time delta T. Okay? I can actually put T of uh, T plus delta T X minus T of T X. This is increase of the temperature. Well, basically, I have finished or almost finished because this particular um, equality allows me uh, to construct this um, differential equation and here is how what I will do is I will instead of this let me just make it a little bit shorter it's uh, k times delta t times s times difference between t x plus delta x dx minus dt tx by dx so what I will do now I will do the following I will put delta x down here and delta t down there so what I will have is c times rho which is mass per unit of volume times well s is not actually participating anymore and here i will have t of t plus delta t comma x minus t of t x divided by delta t right this delta t goes to the denominator and this delta x goes to this denominator Uh, and here I will have d t of t x plus delta x x minus d t of t x by d x times K. Right? And what do I do now? Well, obviously, I will use delta T goes to zero and delta X goes to zero independently. What happens? What is this if delta T goes to zero? That's obviously C times rho times partial derivative of this function by dt. And what is on the right? This is partial derivative by x if delta x goes to zero. And then I again um, divided by uh, delta x, so difference between two values of partial derivative, first partial derivative by x, if I divide by the x. This is the definition of the second derivative, right? So what is 
second derivative, it's a derivative of the first derivative, right? So that's what it is. And this constitutes the heat e equation. That's what it is. This is the heat equation. It connects together second derivative by the second argument, by linear argument x, and the first derivative of, um, of the temperature by, by time. And we have these coefficients of proportionality, which usually are combined together somehow. And the final equation usually is expressed as this. where alpha square is equal to k divided by c rho. And alpha is equal to square root of this. Alpha square is important because if you will start um, solving this equation, you will have something which depends on alpha. So that's why it's important. Alpha or a sometimes different letters are used. So what was important here is well, first of all, I spent some time explaining certain concepts of um, uh, thermodynamics, if you wish. Um, what is the heat? What is the uh, special, uh, specific uh, uh, thermal capacity? What is thermal conductivity? And there are two experimental laws which, con which, which, which combine together the amount of heat and rise of the temperature um, and uh, in the case of conductivity uh, amount of heat which goes through certain point uh, is related to a rate of change of the temperature in, at this particular point. So we had these experimental laws if you wish and after that, using pure logic, we have uh, combined these conditions together and derived certain differential equation which function temperature as dependent on the time and distance from the source of, uh, source of the heat. Now this function should obey this differential equation. That's what's important. Now, if you start solving this differential equation, um, and we might actually speak about this in, in another lecture, you will find that there are certain constants which are always kind of involved when you are um, uh, solving uh, differential equations, which must be somehow defined. And for this reason, you need obviously initial conditions. Now, one of the initial conditions, for instance, in this particular case, is what is the material um, our uh, thin rod is made of. That defines actually all these constants. It's a uh, mass per unit of volume. Um, it's uh, a specific uh, thermal capacity and it's thermal conductivity. So these are specific for material it's made of. Let's say it's a steel, for instance, or something. But then there are some other constants our solution will depend upon. And obviously it includes, okay, what's the temperature of the rod initially? And what's the temperature of the source of the heat which we are applying to the end, to, to the left end of this rod on my, on my picture? So these are initial uh, conditions. And if, you, if we apply these conditions, then basically everything should be defined. Then this particular equation after we solve it will no longer depend on certain uh, unknown constants but these constants will be definitely uh, will definitely have certain concrete value all right so I do suggest you to read notes for this lecture it's on unisor.com um, it's a little bit involved I would say because uh, I was trying to do something uh, and, and I, I had to slow down in certain cases because um, I myself had to really think about it twice before every, every new formula. Um, but if you will read it in the notes, it's 
it's really uh, explained relatively well. And again, you're always welcome to go back to this lecture to uh, make sure that you understand all the details of this. So it's important to understand that this is uh, one of the many, many differential equations which basically conduct the way how all our world around us is, is, is working, uh, living, uh, moving, uh, doing whatever it's doing. Everything in this world is somehow related to certain differential equations. In most cases, it's partial differential equations. Um, and it's very important for you to understand the philosophy behind it. In the same way as simple uh, second uh, Newton's law um, uh, tells you how exactly one particular uh, point mass will move if, if there is a force which we apply to this mass, right? So these are simple things, but the real laws of the physics uh, and nature are much more complicated and partial differential equations is basically the most important kind of laws which all these movements in our world actually supposed to obey. All right, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.